And um, first, we're going to have a presentation from Marina, who is at Camarillo High School, and she's the president of the Naturally Green Club. And she started a really great project at school a couple of years ago, and um, I would like her to talk about it. So without any further ado, take it away, Marina. Okay. Um, also, Mrs. Jackson says host disabled persons screen sharing. So I believe you're going to have to present my my okay. slides. Yeah. Hi everyone. My name is Marina. I am a senior at Camarillo High School, and I'm going to be talking about how I successfully implemented and executed on a three bin system throughout Camarillo High School that hopefully you guys can take back to your schools and start it up there. Mrs. Jackson, do you have the slides up? I'm looking for them. I'm so sorry. No uh, problem. I can re-email them to you if you'd like. I found them. Okay. And I have them. Now I'm going to share. Okay. Share screen. Do you guys see it? Everybody have it? We see your desktop. Darn it. Or if you make, um, can you add Marina to host? Yeah. And then she can. <laughs> um, Marina, we're going to make you the host. Excellent. <laughs> okay. Okay, there we go. Take it away. <laughs> awesome. Ooh. Okay, let me start presenting. Okay, so I see this. Does it look a little? It's blocky. Okay, what is the three I've bin system? So, um, just to talk to you guys about what the three bin system is, it is going to be obviously three bins. One of those bins is going to be recycle, one of them trash, and one of them compost. So, I'm sure you're asking, how? Where do I start? How can I implement this into my school? So, here's a picture of our early compost bins. As you can see, there's the compost in the middle, or recycling trash, and then pictures corresponding on the posters about what you should put in each compost bin system. Now, I am sure we are going to be talking about what compost is, um, what you shouldn't put in the compost bin system. So I'll make this really quick because I'm not here to educate you guys on that, but just the system. So what goes in the compost bin? Short answer, food, long answer, certain types of food. So fruits, veggies, uh, like I said, the example of banana peel, um, old, not diseased plants. Um, what not to put in the compost bin system, greasy, meaty, dairy-ish foods that would spoil. Um, so no hot dogs, no burgers, no dairy. So if a kid comes up and has a big old burger that they want to throw away, maybe say, I'll take your tomato, not take the meat in the greasy bun that will be put in it. So I'm going to go through my business plan that I have written up. Um, and it took me not that long. It took me about a summer to implement this into the school with the help so much of the district and OUHSD Farm School. So for the first step, you need to have a written plan. You need to have a document, kind of a resume-ish type of plan that you can give to people that have questions. So networking is probably the second most important thing is because you have to sell this idea to a lot of people. A lot of people actually some people have pushed back a little bit and then you have to educate them because if they don't know, some people don't like change or don't want to know what is going on. So first off, you need approval from your principal. This is when you take in your written plan and you hand it over to the principal. Uh, you should connect with the director of nutritional services in the OUHSD school district. We do have a new one this year, so that's awesome. And you should connect with OUHSD Farm to School, connecting with your local trash company, which would be EJ Harrison for us because they, we need them to provide the compost bins and to pick up the compost. Um, so these bins are not an on-site composting bin system. I know Alex does have an on-site composting bin system, which was the second phase of my plan, but COVID kind of put a dent in things. So for this plan, you need to contact uh, the EJ Harrison company as well. So all these connections, these are all supportive people that will help you on your journey to create 
these bin systems. I don't know what I would have done if I didn't have the support from the nutritional services and OUHSD Barmer School. So second is education. Education, I cannot stress enough because you have to educate the entire student body, the maintenance crew, the principals, the administrations about your idea and why composting is effective. So first stop is to get your environmental cl club involved and wanting to help. Again, with the selling this idea, you have to make it seem amazing because trust me, sometimes composting isn't the prettiest thing to do, so you really have to sell it. Uh, another one is educating your student body. This can be done through virtual announcements. We have Cam High Connect that me and other people would go on to this virtual setting um, even before COVID and it would be presented to the entire school about what's going on, communication. Um, going class to class for presentations about the effects of composting. I was able to go to a lot of classes just by asking the teachers, do you have five minutes to spare? Not over that, five minutes to spare where I can come in I can do a mini presentation about any questions they have about the effects of the composting bin system, what to look for. And then also that helps you get the word out. You also need a lot of support from the clubs, but you can also go to other clubs. Uh, there's some volunteer clubs that I went to and presented to them that they could join the compost bin system because for the execution part of it, you do need a lot of people. Second is kind of the end game. This is when you're planning. So where are you going to put these three bins? So you need to put these three bins in a highly populated area and not in an area where no one goes. So I chose to put this by the cafeteria because it just made more sense. Usually students tend to congregate more around highly populated areas. Those are the best. Also, talking to the maintenance staff, um, they have to coordinate with themselves as well. We do need the two other bins to be next to each other at all times. Um, to make the three bin system work. They have to make sure that they have to dump the compost in a different place. So talking to the maintenance staff is also very important. This means a lot of communication. You have to communicate with your principal to get the maintenance staff together and to sell them their idea as well. I think one of the harder parts of this, just in my experience, was probably the maintenance staff because there was a lot of hiccups in between, a lot of questions, a lot of um, insecurities about doing this. So it's, it's very important to communicate with them as well. So execution, this is my favorite part, uh, but you have to plan who will be at these bins, which is means creating a schedule for volunteers and you can give out volunteer hours that we were able to do. Um, and also setting up a remind, a remind text I'm sure you all know is when someone can text 810, 810, say at composting bin or whatever. And then I would put them and make schedules once a week in the beginning of who will stand by the bins every nutrition and lunch, at least for the first phase of this is because students need to be urged. If they go up and they see trash compost recycle, they're just gonna throw it away. But if they go up and there's someone like me staring at them saying, hey, let me, let me show you what you can do next. You can take your hamburger and throw it in the trash, but this tomato and these extra um, apples that you have, you can throw in the compost bin system. But then the water bottle you have can also be in the recycling system and kind of help them and guide them through this. This takes a lot of work. Um, I was there almost every day, nutrition and lunch standing out there, but I also had a lot, a lot of volunteers because they did have volunteer hours. So it was kind of good for them if they needed to meet a quota. So they would come, stand in front of the bins, um, help me out with that, one to two people. Um, we actually had two systems, one inside the cafeteria, one out, just to kind of start it out. Also making posters or signage so people know what goes in each bin. As you saw from the first picture I showed you, the compost bins, um, we had three different posters that we made and the arts committee made it. And we printed out little pictures of what not to go in there, what to go in there. Also keeping up with it. If you slip up even by a week, trust me, it will be on you, I'm sure. Um, I know that I was sick for a couple days uh, and you know I didn't get the scheduling out just, just one week for, through the remind and I got emailed by the principal and the head maintenance staff and I had to go in and have a meeting. So definitely keeping up with this is the most 
maybe first most important thing about it. You have to be passionate about it. You have to keep up with it. So concluding my business plan, which I'd be happy to share with you guys in a uh, PDF format. There is also, let me see if I can move this, kind of my final step in the plan that I wanted to execute this year, but because of COVID, I couldn't. So I wanted to create this bigger gardening program that was connected to com compost. We do have garden boxes at our school that grow uh, really good. I love organic uh, vegetables. So what kind of my plan was to take this composting bin system, taking a portion of it and having a composting bin system at my school that we could use to turn into fertilizer and then grow, uh, say, like you said, carrots, lettuce in these planter boxes and then end up donating, donating them to food share. Um, that was kind of the end goal. COVID kind of put a dent on it uh, just a little bit. Uh, also, we can't take in all the compost, so make sure to have the trash company still be able to pick up compost because we did get a lot of waste from over 2,000 kids at my school. So that means the we can't take all that from 2,000 kids uh, composting. We can only take a certain number of it, so just know your limits um, into creating a composting bin system at your school. So I really hope that if you are from a different school, if you're even from my school, from Naturally Green, you will continue on this legacy because it is very important about composting system, which I'm sure we're going to talk about today. If you would like my business plan, I'd be happy to talk with you, sit down with you um, virtually, of course, and send you my business plan. So thank you very much. That concludes my presentation. Um, and let me stop sharing. So thank you. Excellent job. Excellent, excellent job. <laughs> I was so impressed with how you connected to all the student clubs and promoted it on campus and got the schedule for volunteers to, to educate your fellow students by the trash cans. I mean, that was just such a great plan and you did such a great job. Um, and we would love to support carrying on this project at other school sites. So um, thank you so much, Marina. Thank um, you for letting me present and thank you yeah. Nick and all OUHSD Farm School as well as nutritional services of the district. Um, that was really influential what you guys have done to support us. So thank you. That's what we're here for, to support you guys. Um, and then Alex did kind of a, a different version of that project with composting. Alex, do you want to share? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, thank you for having me. Everyone, my name is Alex, and I am the president at the RCHS Green Club. So I started, this is Mara's story, not as in-depth as Marina's business plan, but I think that would be a wonderful addition to Rancho's campus. So I will definitely work to get that set up because I think it is wonderful. Um, so my, our composting at Rancho sort of started as a passion project. So I was given the opportunity in 10th grade to do um, just like a, a, a passion project <laughs> in my English class. So what I decided to do is because I compost at home, I wanted to do composting at school. So what that entailed was I wanted to go really big and do something like a three bin system that Marina brought up, but I knew I needed to uh, approach this slowly. So what I did was I started collecting food scraps from the cafeteria. OUHSD Farm to School was very, very influential in helping me with this. So they were able to connect me with the cafeteria staff. And so what I would do is I would set out a five gallon bucket right outside the cafeteria. They would add the food scraps in during the day while they made student lunches. And then I would come pick that up every other day or something like that and add it to our on-site compost at Rancho, which is in our garden. So I did that for about three months. I, oh, it was so long ago, I can't remember how many bins I collected, but it really did inspire me to kind of revamp our school's green club because it was sort of inactive at the time. So I was doing, like I said, I was doing that composting all by myself. And then I gathered a group of students to form our green club. And from there, we started working again with farm to school and doing garden days and stuff like that. Um, I kept doing the food scrap collection with the cafeteria, but I also wanted to involve students. So what we started to do was we gave students five gallon buckets that they could take home, collect food scraps in over the week. And then on Fridays, when we had our morning meetings at the garden, we would add that we would add their food scraps to our compost uh, on site. So that was really enjoyable. We did that um, 
that was last year. So we did that for about four months and probably got over 50 buckets of compost. So that was really, really amazing. My goal was to help reduce food waste and also educate students about um, you know, environmental awareness and uh, sustainability because that's really my big passion. So um, we did our student food scrap collection. We had one three bin compost system, which was just like three separated um, sort of crates set up where we would dump the compost in, mix it around uh, pretty, it was pretty like manual. We were doing a lot of uh, work for that. And I was also able to get a donation of a vermicomposter bin, which is basically like compost that is very focused with worms. So they're able to like turn the food into castings and we could use that as compost. So that was like an individual bin. We got that donated and it was really amazing. And I've actually taken care of it over the past year for COVID because um, I wanted to make sure it, the worm stayed alive and we were still getting compost working. So that is gonna be at Rancho this year or upcoming year. Once we get back to school, we're gonna have that vermicomposter, which is, it's mobile so we can, um, we can move it to locations. We're gonna have that going next year, hopefully. And then also probably build up our three bin compost system. So that's kind of a little bit of what I've done. I'm very passionate about the environment and I thought composting was a great way to involve students. Um, the Green Club has definitely started out small, but I think we're on track to make a big difference at Rancho. And one of the great things about Rancho is that it is, it's a pretty small school. We have about 500 students. So it is very easy to do something that is small scale and replicable because we have such a small student body. So, and I also think we have a great support system with teachers that are able to help us sort of get this going. Teachers and staff like the OUHC Farm to School. So that's sort of my story about composting. It really started as a small passion project and sort of uh, evolved into something that involved a lot more people. So yeah, that's my story. Thank you guys uh, for listening. And I hope this inspires you maybe do some composting at home or look into more environmental stuff. Thank, right, you, thank, thank you. you. I want to, yeah. And I think um, as the person who watched both of your projects, I think what was key and it's very similar is that this, these, this type of change requires so much patience um, that you both probably experienced both with, you know, teaching our cafeteria staff how to compost. And you did, you were like, this is how you compost. And this is, and for them to remember that they needed to put things in the compost. And then um, the same thing goes with Marina and you're trying to change the behaviors of students on campus for but instead of throwing things all in the trash can to actually separating out their trash. Um, and so what's key, what's a key lesson, I think, for everyone who's taking this on as a new project to kind of set your expectations. Um, you know, maybe, maybe smaller than, you know, to set your expectations very managed reasonably and to approach the whole project with a whole lot of patience, which both of you did. Um, and I want to open this up for all of our other students who are here to ask questions. Um, don't be shy. Does anyone want to start this project at their school? Because we're here to support and help. I can also put my number in the chat if anyone would like to reach out to me after or my email, my school Gmail. Did our Pacifica students join? Yes or no? Well, while you're thinking, of, how about we start here? Does any, so does anyone want to start this project at their school? We have a chat, let's see. I go to Rio, yay Rio. Let's start this at Rio Mesa. Do you have any questions? You can unmute yourself, Piper. I think Piper's on the bus, okay. so it may be hard. Yeah, she's on the way on her way home on the bus. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. So Marina's here. She's also your student representative to the board of supervisors for the district, and she has something she'd like to share that's unrelated but very important. Take it away. <laughs> Hello again. Sorry about that. Um, this will be really quick. So. 
my position as the Board of Education representative is to collect student voice. So I have a survey that really helps me each year that I, uh, each month, sorry, not each year, uh, each month that I send out to the student body. So hopefully you guys have uh, actually filled this out before. I'm trying to get oh, to 700 responses, which is gonna be really challenging, but I'm, I'm really pushing it. Um, I present this then to the Board of Education um, and to the public, also the city of Camarillo. So I'm gonna put in the link you guys, as in students, your voice is very crucial into how I present to the superintendent and to the board, what differences that have to be made. Um, they make action plans to what I do say. So if you would like to see anything different, it's a really short survey this, this month. And if you would also like to join my Google Classroom, because I have a Google Classroom just for the Board of Education uh, surveys to be sent out and Zoom calls that I do to collaborate with students across the district. Uh, just let me know if you'd like to join. Thank you. Excellent. Yeah, it's really great for more students to just be aware that we do have a student representative to the board. Um, she goes to every board meeting. I've watched several. She represents you all well. Um, and she definitely, that's, she's definitely very committed to representing your students. So you've done a great job. Um, yeah, so in the future, um, for our younger students who aren't graduating this year, um, it's definitely something that they should know. Um, any other questions about composting or recycling? So we're going to start one at Rio Mesa. We're ready. Yeah, and um, just to tag on uh, for teachers, Robin, if you're an educator over there, um, and if we have any other teachers in here incorporating um, composting or food waste into your curriculum, um, is also a great way to like add consistency to picking things up. Um, so if you need help with that or would be interested in there, um, we can also help to add that into the curriculum or tweak the curriculum to, to, help, to help with the longevity of the project too. Yeah, and the way that um... The way that Farm to School can help support, um, so we can definitely help with the on-campus composting, so that's one way. Um, and then we can also work with the cafeteria too. Um, so, so we're here and um, it's a really great project for students. So I know students are looking for, like Marina said, community service hours and, and things like that. Um, Anna, when you say working with the cafeteria, do you mean just like helping to like, support the kids request to get the composting to happen or do you mean like actually just making the connections for communication purposes or introducing the staff to the to the student who's interested in spearheading this or what does that actually mean when you say that you're working with the cafeteria kind of all of the above so mm -hmm. um so at Camarillo, we actually had meetings with our trash company um, and helped, you know, kind of go through the process of um, looking at all of the different containers that come with our school meals um, and then identifying for the students, you know, which containers are recyclable, which can we compost, um, things like that. And then um, so working with the trash company to get the containers on campus um, mm -hmm. and then and then when it came to um, composting, helping to get like we have, you know, different containers and buckets and things like that and helping the cafeteria to um, understand what they can put and what they can compost and what they can't. Mm -hmm. um, and then helping come up yep. with a schedule for the students to collect it. And then if we have an on campus um, compost bin, um, mm -hmm. like they do at Rancho Campana, and we were starting the one at Camarillo <laughs> until COVID happened, um, helping the kids go to put the compost into the into the actual compost pile. And then what Anna was talking about is how she incorporates that into curriculum too. So she has a whole composting unit um, about the science of composting that she works with um, our environmental science, our biology teachers, um, and they, you know, we make it like a pro like a class project too. Oh, right. Sure. All right. So would the next step be then to contact you or to contact somebody on site at You can Rio contact Mesa? me. Yeah. Okay. That would yeah. be a good starting place. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I think it's, it's really realistic. We could start in the fall. I think this year um, is a great time for us to start planning. 
But I think right now our best bet is to build um, build a group of students like Marina was saying, because that's really key is getting the students who are committed to go during their nutrition and lunch breaks to educate their fellow mm -hmm. students to make those signs and to hang mm -hmm. signs and posters around campus and to do all of that, um, because that's mm -hmm. what will really make the difference. Mm -hmm. Right, to get the buy-in and to sort of work on building that foundation now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so if we spend our time right now doing those pieces, then once mm -hmm. we actually get the three bins in the cafeteria, um, it'll be a bit easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have a question to the kids who've been maintaining the compost. So do you use a, like a pitchfork? What other sort of, like, what do you, what is the equipment that you need to actually like, you know, turn the material? How often are you turning the material? Who's maintaining the compost? So I can answer that question mm -hmm. um, since we have an on-site compost bin at Rancho. So when we were there, we were using like pitchfork. We would have uh, we had morning meetings every Friday. So we would have students turn, like sort of move around the compost. You would just pick up the pitchfork, flip it over, that kind of stuff. Um, and probably do that for about a few minutes. So we'd have students doing that every week. And sometimes I would go over to the garden and do it like after school. So maybe like about twice a week, we were doing like a big um, sort of flipping it around. And then whenever you add uh, the compost, you wanna, um, sort of put the food underneath like a pile of dirt mm -hmm. or like the more mm -hmm. broken down compost that way you don't have any rodents or anything like that so the materials you kind of need are just uh just a pitchfork uh maybe mm -hmm. a few that way if you have multiple bins or other students working you could have that mm -hmm. and then um just students flipping it for a few minutes mm -hmm. so anna are things like that because i understand the containers come from ej harrison but for the other tools which is minimal but like are you looking for donations for that kind of stuff or is that coming from we have them um, yeah we have we have pitchforks i think we probably we probably have some at rio mace already in our shed okay. um and then we built we originally built a three bin system at rio mesa in the way back garden by the football field um and we just use pallets from maintenance they just give mm -hmm. them to us and um anna who's here she um she works a lot with our compost too but we have those um We've started smaller ones on it. Do we have one in our Zen garden at Rio? Um, we don't have one in the Zen garden at Rio because the purpose of that was more so to like provide um, like a relaxing space to go. Yeah. Um, composting to me is very relaxing, but maybe not to other people. Um, so, but we can definitely find uh, spaces closer, like on campus, like right next to the Zen garden or those raised beds that have been there for forever um the it would be awesome if the big garden was the main site for the compost because it's so far away from campus it kind of be mm -hmm. um out of sight out of mind and probably best for um like administrative purposes uh just to like keep the camps clean but we do have compost on all garden sites that we have um throughout the district so like pacifica's garden is like in like Kind of an open space on campus and we have a compost system there it doesn't really get stinky um also like we're here farm to school as a resource where if it gets overwhelming and the students can't take care of it for a week like we can always come help and step in um and set up a schedule like you know the goal is to have student leaders like alex and marina uh encourage others to do it right too but um we are always here to to help mitigate any issues that come up with it Mm-hmm. Okay. Excellent. So we have one school committed. Anybody else? Any other questions? Okay, well, hopefully you all know how to find us if you come up with questions later. We could wrap up early for today. Is that a good plan? Sure. Yeah. Okay. I hope everybody fills out Marina's survey. It's important um and enjoy the rest of quarter four and we do have a few more topics for food revolution um we have two guest speakers from that are going to talk about our food system so one is from the chef and foundation um i'll type the link um this is a really cool organization um that works with their their national organization they're based out of denver 
and um, they work with schools all across the country to teach like scratch cooking and they've reached out and just asked about our farm to school program for different reasons and so we asked them to come to our to our speaker series to tell us more about what the work that they do um, to help improve school meals all over the country and then the other organization is called the center for good food purchasing and the schools in Ventura County who participate in the Ventura County Farm to School Collaborative actually hired the Center for Good Food Purchasing to do this analysis of all of our purchasing. And it's a really, really great organization. They do this work and really what they're trying to do is to look at the ways as a society that we can improve our environment, that we can um, ensure good treatment of animals, have really high quality nutritious food, look at our carbon footprint, um, and how does the food we purchase affect those different factors? And so she's going to come and talk to us about her work. It's really interesting. Um, and so we're going to post the dates for those. Those are in a couple of weeks. And we're open for other topics too. So if you guys have guests you'd like us to invite or topics you'd like us to cover, just let us know and we'll make it happen. Um, thanks for everybody for joining. Thanks everyone. I also just wanted to add um, for different schools, Rumi said like, so I know um, Alex, uh, the Green Club is going to start doing garden days and Marina will work something out with Camarillo to do garden days. But if anyone else is interested in bringing students out or volunteer clubs um, to any of the gardens across the district, uh, please let me know. I'll put my email in the chat here. Um, feel free to reach out. We're starting to get students back in and, and it's been really great. So let me know. Let me answer your question, Robin. Um, so she's asking if we take like the clippings from around campus, which is a really great point because we have so much grass on campus and other clippings. We, in some of our bigger compost, we actually get enough, um, we actually get enough like plant waste from our garden itself. So, you know, we are like pulling out old dead plants and things like that. So we haven't, on am I right? We haven't really been using a lot of like tree clippings from around campus. Um, so I think everything we need in terms of our, do we call that the brown component of the compost? We get kind of from the gardens itself. Yeah, um, but yeah, please. We will continue to have the conversation and we're really excited. Thank you, everyone. Good job, ladies. Yeah, great job, students. Thank you. Congratulations on both of your futures next year. I'm so excited for you. Hawaii and Berkeley gonna be so fun. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye everybody. See ya. Thank you everyone. Bye. Bye.